Hey y'all, it's Anime Kim, and today I'm going to be reviewing episode 1 of Zenki Seishu Sample Gear XV, episode 1. And I gotta say, this was a nice, nice return of form to the series. And this just reminded me why I was missing this series so much, because for one, I like how already you have a lot of mystery and intrigue within this specific episode and it's kinda has a different tone versus some of the first few episodes of the series save for the season one which also had kind of a dark opening. This one has kind of a dark opening too because it already starts out with the man that's bleeding to death and then he's saying that we've lost the words and time and then he apologizes to Fine before he passes away. So already I like the dark start really it shows you that shit's gonna be really real because in some of the Samba Gear seasons it starts out with like over-the-top action and all that kind of jazz usually of either things like say parts of a mountain being wrecked and stuff of that nature but this episode it takes a different approach because for one except for having that mysterious start when the girls do take on this coffin thing, they actually struggle this time, which is also a nice, and again, gives me vibes to the first season of the series. Because usually, when there is a start in a Sonic Gear season, it's usually pretty easy for our main protagonist. So already I like that. And it made for some engaging action sequences from the story standpoint, because there wasn't a single moment when there was dull, and Hilariously enough, the moments where Hibiki is in the water and then they tell her stuff like her, um, the abilities of her gear are weaker when she's underwater. And then I like how afterwards you see Hibiki move around the water, then she still manages to launch the confident into the sky. And it just, it was like just prime over the top self gear greatness that I really loved. I was just laughing throughout the whole thing. So I like that too where it embraces the over-the-topness and it just goes with it so perfectly. And that's what I really love about the show in general in this specific episode. And it was really, really nice. And then aside from that, I also like how it also seemingly introduces two, um, two girls that were observing our main characters finding the coffin and all that kind of just it makes you wonder, what's their deal? And they're most likely they're gonna be antagonists against our main crew. And then there was also this woman with, with like dark skin that seemingly also feels like an antagonist. So I like how already it's setting up things for future episodes at the very least. At the very least. And what I also like about the story in this episode was at the very least you do have Hibiki and Miku. You have pretty much Chris bonding with the crew more because you actually see Hibiki and Miku do things like even get a present for Chris for her birthday. So I also like those little details too. And aside from moments like that, it was also nice to even get that sequence of Hibiki and Miku singing and Hibiku passing and all that kind of jazz and getting some praise from the teacher. That was also another nice sequence there too. Further, um, Further making the bond between Hibiki and Miku feel really, really warm. So that was also another nice element about this episode. It makes Miku... Miku is already super likable, but things like that just makes Miku an endearing character. And then when it gets to the freaking action, it was nice. It was tense. It was blood pumping. It was exciting. And I like it. And I especially liked how it wasn't just uh, the girls that took him down. It was... The civilians have been that out too because they were able to buy enough time making like this signal flare so that it gave enough time for Hibiki, Tsubasa, Chris and the other girls to regain their consciousness because if it wasn't for that the confident would have taken them down completely. That was also another nice element into the episode too. So that's what I thought from a story standpoint it did really really great because I felt it utilized the cast pretty well. They all contributed equally. And it made for a satisfactory defeat for the coffin creature because he didn't go down like a bitch. 
And honestly, going in, I thought Hibiki was going to do the fisting, but it was the coffee future that did the fisting towards Hibiki for most of the episode. So, that was kind of shocking, too. And I like that little subversion of expectations that this episode had. And aside from that, I'd say from a character standpoint, there wasn't much to grasp aside from Hibiki and Miku bonding with each other a bit more. And additionally, I do like how, for one, you get to have some nice banter, like in the sequence where um, Hibiki mentions Chris's birthday is coming up, and then Chris is like, I don't want you to jinx me. So stuff like that really, really made the interactions with the character feel really lively despite it being mostly an action-centered episode. So that was also another cool factor about this episode. Even though it wasn't super character-centric, there was still nice character moments here and there where I thought I did well from that standpoint. As for the art animation, what more can I say? It has been fucking great. Like when there's the action sequences and they go really fast, you can see the hair moving of the girls. Or when there's like, say, attacks, it looks powerful, it looks fluid. And then I like how they even portray power, like when Hibiki does like the beam with all the other girls and it just destroys the conflict when it's in the sky. I like how it shows all the clouds move away too, portraying its grand power. And making you feel like, damn, that thing is fucking brutal. So I like that it shows you that so the animation and the direction staff, they know how to portray power really, really well. And aside from that, I also liked how throughout this episode they even animated things like the water moving pretty well, like when Tsubasa was skiing there really quick to dodge an attack. And then the sequences where Kibiki were, was in the water was really, really fluid too, actually. And so I also liked that. And the art was nice too. There wasn't a single sequence where I thought, oh man, the art looks derpy as fuck. No, if anything, the animators were flexing their muscles, their animation muscles, and I really loved it. And the soundtrack was beautiful as always. If there's anything the series has done great from the get-go, it is the soundtrack and the voice performances. They're phenomenal as always. Every punch, every hit felt strong. So I got a praise for that too. And overall, I thought this episode was great, and I'm going to rate it an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was wonderfully done, gets me pumped up for more, and I cannot wait. So anyways, guys and gals, these are my thoughts on the episode. Be sure to comment on your thoughts on the episode in the comments section below. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe, comment, share if y'all want to, and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more. Alright, thank y'all so much for watching, everyone. Have a good safe day. Bye-bye.